What book have I gifted the most to other people? I would say Day of the Fish by Shannon Dory, only because it's great at times to have some kind of foundation when it comes to studying metaphysical or spiritual and occult materials, because, yeah, it could get a bit fanciful. So I like to really go to the ancestral side of things to see how the the geometry connects to the story. So, you know, if you understand Adinkras and uh, you understand some of the symbols behind many of the stars, like, you know, even previous stars, then you can find those symbols in other places, even within organisms. And it gives you more of a realization of what's happening here from an organic side. Because if you're looking at this from like a literary knowledge side, it doesn't answer all of what you need to know. And you get very rapidly buried into some kind of dogmatic tradition or some kind of corruption of the higher knowledge. So I like uh, The Day of the Fish because it goes back through one of the deepest mysteries that have already been documented and really put in stone. And it matches so correctly with what you see in humanity especially from a genetic level like where there's a genetic de degradation and there's and then where there's a plight to repair that genetic de degradation so meaning that there is was an event that caused there to be a constant degradation of the dna this would be like steps of a ladder being missing so you could be trying to get to this other phase and the entire ring is missing and this is why like through activation, sometimes you feel like there's like a car starting up and then once it gets started, it can seem to keep running. And then at a certain point, it just kind of cuts off. And so that's because there's like links in the string that's missing and you can repair those links when you easily see a mirror of those links. And that's what higher consciousness does is it allows you to be able to see yourself in a state of perfection, right? Because I'm, I'm just using English to try to explain something that doesn't have a language associated with it. So that's again why I give that book the most to everyone is because it, it snaps them out of this. Sometimes the spell, like just all the different occult works that have come out that, you know, are just like someone can create an entire world in occult works. Like it's our ability to create an environment based on what we believe that is what culture is, okay? So there are many people who've discovered the formula of creating cultures, like Dr. Seuss, and they've actually created subcultures or dreams within a dream. And it's, it's really easy for a person to live in one of these alternate realities, especially if they're trying to escape the prime reality. So if they're given any reason why not to be present, then they tend to latch a hold to an alternate reality or correspondence or character and because there's so many of these correspondence and characters in the programming of what's going on in the the prussian system the school system become school the becoming of the accepted thing in german etc because of that then this is what creates the alternate realities for many characters that people may find themselves stuck in and uh, also the formula for even getting oneself unstuck from that when realizing hey that that's exactly what it is it's a program running Okay, so yeah, that's it. Uh, actually, somebody did post that up in the chat. That's Day of the Fish by Shannon Dory. And uh, check it out, you know, if, and there's another one called The Rose. I mean, she went off in that one, like as far as just understanding the geometry behind things, the speed, you know, all the stuff, the different changes through the reality. It's a bit to, you know, to grasp for uh, a moment, but the most practical in attempts to understand the ancient symbolism. So well, there's a lot of other works. There's Medu Netter. There's a lot of other things. But that was just specifically the book that I do give out the most because it's a good on-ramping process to understanding the connection between our ancestral lineage, the earth, what we're seeing right now in this digital age, or supposed to be technological age, our connection with each other, our connection with our family, why we feel like that connection is sometimes not as strong as we would like it to be, how to get it strong. Like when you're reading that book, you shouldn't see any of the characters that are being mentioned, like the jackal, the mother of speech, Leb, you know, all the different, you know, deep, uh, uh, all the different uh, uh, mythological archetypes, you should see them as something internal. And what it'll do is it'll allow you to see your internal struggle and then it'll allow you to come to harmony with yourself. So that way, now that you're not arguing and wasting your own energy, and this is one thing that you have to realize that in any relationship, if you're arguing, if you're wasting your energy, that's going to cost you. It's going to cost both of you. It's going to cost all of you. And so, of course, in the reality, this is what's broadcasting all the time. Just fight. 
Like even in some of the most <clears throat> craziest books, <clears throat> the craziest dark forces, their sole job is to cause division. <clears throat> That's all they do. Like whether it's to separate a husband from a wife, whether it's to separate the rich from the poor, whether it's all, just all separate. That's all they want to do.